Hi there. Today we're going to be doing a video. Uh, it's just going to be a quick post-processing shader programming effect. I was going to go ahead and quickly do this, and I figured why well, might as well just record it and put it in a video so you guys can can learn from it at the same time. So I was looking at this scene, and uh, something about the colors in this scene just kind of bothered me. Like I don't like the brown and everything. This looks kind of bland. So I thought maybe I would try to do like a psychedelic effect on this scene, and I thought maybe I would try to animate it. And I thought the easiest way to do that would be to do like a live hue shift, which basically takes wherever the color's position is on the color circle and just rotates it around. Um, and I thought I would actually have that effect fan out radially from the center. Now I'm pretty sure this video is going to contain me getting frustrated and I may or may not edit that out because uh, I haven't really actually done any planning for this with the exception of adding two utility functions to uh, my post-processing effect, which basically consist of the RGB to HSV and back. I grabbed those uh, from some, some sample code on the internet just so I could have those available to me. But uh, all the radial stuff, um, I'm going to basically be trying to do that on the fly using whatever's inside my head. And uh, that may or may not go well. So the way this, I'm doing this on my iPad right now, so if you guys can't tell. Um, the way I usually do shader editing on the iPad in Virto Studio is you have this movable window in landscape, but it's kind of full screen so that you can uh, see what you're doing and type a little bit easier without having your text grab. So I might do some of the programming um, in this view, and then I might switch back to landscape when I want to see how things are going. Um, or I might just deal with it in landscape, we'll see. So the first thing I want to do is perform a quick hue shift, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to grab the current color, which is coming in from the texture, and I'm going to convert it from its native RGB to HSV. So I'm going to quickly just go ahead and make a call from RGB to HSV with the color XYZ component, and that'll give me my um, HSV values. Now, I don't 100% know how they did this. They probably normalized everything, I hope. So um, the return value probably means that H is between the, the values of 0 and uh, 1, corresponding um, to the angles of 0 to 360 degrees on the color wheel. I'm just going to go ahead and confirm that real quickly by adding a very small value to the first component, which would basically be X or R. doesn't matter. Um, maybe something along the lines of 0 0.1. That'll cause a huge shift. Um, so like red will become a little bit orange, you know, um, or GBIV. Blue will become a little bit towards indigo or violet and so forth. So once I do that, I'm going to convert it back. Uh, using HSV. And that'll be the new color. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assign that right back in the color XYZ components. And then I'm going to build it. And the advantage of having it in landscape would be that I would actually not have to move this window around. So I think I am going to switch back uh, to landscape. So as you can see, uh, doing that small amount of coding made a huge shift occur in uh, essentially the color. It's just slightly tinted in a different direction. And that's cool. But it would be cooler if we could basically animate that effect. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is pull the shader back up. And I'm going to cause, I don't know if you guys remember from my animation uh, video, if I declare system uniform called time and utilize time in the code, it will cause when, uh, when I'm running in fly through mode, or if I've published um, to the web using the, uh, the cloud feature, it'll automatically animate for me. So let me just go ahead and run fly through. So already we have something pretty psychedelic. It almost looks like we're in a club or something, but it's also pretty terrible because um, it's going really fast. So let me go ahead and just scale this down by quite a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply this by some very small number. I believe 0 0.01 should be enough. And I'm going to go ahead and run this again. <laughs> that is awesome looking. I already really like this. 
So um, I'm also probably going to play with the other things like value and saturation, maybe. But right now, um, this is this is already. I almost want to leave it like this because it's just so funny. But I, I need I need to make it look more psychedelic. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to cause the hue shift to be dependent upon uh, essentially the polar coordinate radius with respect to the center of the screen. Please enjoy the motorcycle that just drove by my freaking street. Anyway. Um, so that, that, what I just said, the polar coordinates, that's just really fancy mathematical terms for basically how far away uh, from the center of the screen uh, any given fragment or pixel is. So I'm going to just really quickly for debugging get, get that value right now. So I believe the center of the screen um, is going to be calculated with respect to those texture coordinates, and I believe 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the center. So let me just really quickly verify that by just um, declaring a variable here called vec2 center. I like to program in terms of vectors, so I always like to have things well defined, even if it isn't the most um, straightforward when you're coding uh, way to do it. Five. All right, zero point five. So there's the center, and the difference between the texture coordinates and the center should give me. the um, a vector that I could then um, take the length of to get the distance. So let me just go ahead and I'm just going to call this distance even though it isn't distance yet. And this will basically be, gotta love when my variables are like too long to type on an iPad without getting annoyed. All right, texture coordinates, difference between that and the center. If I wasn't um, going to do the length on these, I believe it actually should be center minus texture coordinates so the vector would point from wherever the current pixel is towards the center but uh, since I'm going to do um, length it doesn't matter. Now my S, uh, GLSL is a little rusty but I believe it's just length of the vector like that so I actually realized this should just be a float. So there's my distance and what I'm going to do is just for debugging sake I'm going to put a quick if statement in here and say if the distance is less or greater than 0.2, make it black, just for testing sake. Just assign the XYZ components to a VEC3 that is 0. All right, let's see what we get. So we should have a circle. That's fine. Um, you'll notice that the aspect ratio is not perfectly perfectly square and that's because um, our screen isn't perfectly square so because these are normalized coordinates even though I have a 1024 by 768 screen I'm dealing with a um, a normalization in both coordinates so 1024 is 1 just a 0 to 1 just as much as 768 is 0 to 1 if I want to um, adjust for that I believe the easiest way for me to do that is there should be a uniform in here called, uh, it's actually called render target size. So that would make sense. I pass it in as a vec2. Render target size. And I'll be able to get the aspect ratio just by dividing the uh, x component and the y component of that variable. So if I want to, I think the simplest thing to do in this case actually would be to make aspect of vec2, the first component containing the aspect ratio that I want, and the second component containing just one, and then I multiply it in. Now I should be able to multiply it into the texture coordinates, and I believe I need to do this to the center. Uh, sometimes when I code, I turn my brain off and just try what most likely is to work so I can work very quickly. A lot of people think this is bad practice, but it helps me code so so fast. And look, in this case, it really does seem like I got it perfect. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Um, I'm just trying to put my line right across the iPad and make sure I'm really centered. It looks like I am. So now that I know what my circle radius should be, it should be actually very easy for me to use that as the hue shift into my psychedelic effect. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is turn off this debugging thing. I mean, I guess I just taught you guys how to do like a circle if you really wanted to um, in the middle of your scene in post. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I have my hue shift, which is done by time. I'm going to go ahead and move this stuff below the code 
that uh, actually does the, the uh, center calculation. And now I'm going to add the distance, or therefore some um, some scaled factor of it to uh, the hue shift that I use for time. So once again, maybe 0 0.01 is fine. I know the same value, um, and I could factor, but I want to be able to vary both independently. So as we can see, that didn't work at all. Let's see why. So I have distance. Um, let me run it through time and make sure it's working at all. Okay. You notice that the values with very low saturation don't seem to hue shift very much. That's very normal because saturation, when it's low, will not cause the color to be that intense. I'll take care of that in just a second if I can figure out why my distance is no longer having an effect on the hue shift at all. So maybe distance should be actually uh, left alone. Let's see what happens when I do that. That actually seems to be perfect. So now we, you can see we have the hue shift dependent upon the radius. Now, uh, I could vary that, the amplitude of how much that is, to uh, basically vary the effect. I'm going to go ahead and just make it times two. I don't want to make it two nuts right now, but um, if I was actually um, creating the shader for distribution, I would actually probably parameterize all these as uniform uh, arguments. But in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and hard code everything in here. Quick reminder, if you're coding on mobile, uh, you can't multiply an integer. You have to be very specific. All right, so here we go. Integer and a float, I meant. So that looks pretty cool. Uh, let me go ahead and run this through the animation. Oh, wow, that is awesome. So it seems to be going backwards. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to make the time. I'm not sure how to do this. I think if I take the time and I make the time negated, that should, that should account for the fact that it looks like it's going backwards when in reality it really doesn't matter. Uh, so let me just go ahead and subtract time from this and see if that takes care of that. It did. So uh, basically at this point all I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to adjust the saturation and we should be good for this psychedelic effect. So I don't want to just blatantly add more saturation to it, even though I guess that's kind of like what would define the psychedelic effect pretty well. Um, what I'd actually like to do in this case is I'd like to only add more, more saturation when the saturation is already low. So what I think I want to do here is I want to take the saturation, fix it from uh, breaking in the most extreme circumstances. There we go. So this is the final effect. This is my psychedelic shader um, running on the iPad, uh, coded on the iPad. And what I'm going to go ahead and do at this point um, is, so I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to publish this to the cloud. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit cloud. I'm going to give it a name first. There we go. So I'm going to publish this to Virto Studio Cloud, and then I'm going to post the link to the cloud scene below, and you guys can look at it directly in your browser. All right, and here it is on Virto Studio Cloud. I'm just going to view it in my web browser. Alright, thanks for watching guys. As usual, if you thought this was awesome, give me a like, give me a subscribe, or go ahead to virtostudio.com and check it out. Thanks. Bye.